All right, guys, it is a hot, sticky, humid, yuck day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where we have miraculously survived Hurricane Fizzle, otherwise known as Hurricane Andre. I'm quite happy to say that, and we have somehow stumbled into Monday. That would be August 23rd. Uh, 2021 and all sorts of things on the mainstream media I could uh, be ranting about, but uh, this one, I think, uh, out of the six I was choosing from, obviously, uh, takes top precedence with all of the competition uh, here on Yahoo News coming from an outfit called Country Living. I thought Country Living was uh, talking about things like uh, how to can beans and how to make a quilt and uh, things like that. But no, Country Living is branching out today looking at the issue that I know is on your mind because it says here, COP26. COP26 a no-nonsense guide on what we can expect. A no-nonsense guide on what we can expect at COP26. Guys, I, you know, before I launch into this, I, probably a little bit of a spoiler alert. Well, if history can be any judge, we can probably go back and look at the first 25 COPs you know, these UN climate talks that they've been having since when? When did these start? 1990 or whenever. Uh, to give you some idea what we can expect from COP26, probably look a whole lot like the first 25 COPs. But anyway, uh, and also we are going to, at the end of this article, we're going to hear from Andy the gardener. Andy the gardener is going to weigh in, even though he even though he wasn't posed the question. Andy the gardener will pretty well answer the question a lot better than this article, and then we're going to get a taste of reality from Russia. But first, let's go to Country Living magazine to find out for a no nonsense guide of what we can expect from COP26. Scratching your head about COP26? Why is COP26 important? Where is it being held? Who will be attending COP26? What's on the COP26 agenda? Oh, and why is it actually called COP26? As the UK gets ready to host the world's most important climate change summit, here is our no-nonsense guide to what to expect. All right. So, why is COP26 important? Hmm, why is, why should you be scratching your head? The conference has been called our, quote, last hope. It is our last hope to reverse the climate crisis. Yes, the 26th COP is our last hope to reverse the climate crisis since the first 25 COPs has only made the crisis worse. A recent report by the IPCC warned that the world's pledge to, you know, at another COP, uh, the world's pledge to keep global heating within one and a half C is fast becoming a pipe dream it was a pipe dream the day it was made, meaning flooding, droughts, extreme heat waves, and wildfires are set to get much worse. COP26 is a rare opportunity for world leaders to get together, to get together and make meaningful change. So there is a lot at stake. There is only a planet at stake at COP26. So now that we know why it is important, 
All right, who gives a shit where the uh, where and when the event? Okay, it's going to be in Glasgow, Scotland, on October thirty first. Okay, who cares why it's called? Okay, now getting to the more more important question. So, who will be attending? More than one hundred ninety world leaders are expected to attend, including Joe Biden. Well, assuming Joe Biden is still president, they, you know, the mainstream media is already just uh, calling it that Joe Biden will never uh, serve out his first term. That, uh, But I'm not getting into the, that, that whole rant. Anyway, assuming Joe Biden, so either President Biden or President Harris, of course, will be there to save the planet. Even Vladimir Putin received a personal invite from Boris Johnson. We're going to get back to Vladimir Putin. Uh, and after we go over this, we're going to be talking about what Vladimir Putin is going to be doing while uh, the rest of the world leaders. I guess Vlad, uh, Vlad the Impaler, has not uh, sent in an RSVP yet. However, Prince Charles is expected to make a speech too. Yes, there will also be UN officials and environment ministers. It is estimated that over 30,000 people, over 30,000 people will descend on Glasgow, Scotland to, uh, for the event. So. Since it's on an island, I would say of the 30,000 people, probably, I'm going to guess 28,000 of them are going to fly in on airplanes. And one of the major things they're going to be talking about is one, of, one way to save the planet is to stop taking unnecessary trips on airplanes. As probably 28,000 of the 30,000 people there will be flying in to a conference talking about how to reduce carbon emissions. But the biggest question of all that everybody wants to know, will Greta Thunberg, will Greta Thunberg be at COP26? Guys, I have some bad news. Greta Thunberg says she is not coming to COP26. So we are not going to have the little obligatory We're not going to have the Greta Thunberg. It sounds like they're grooming some other uh, Greta Thunberg 2.0. They talk about some uh, new little, you know, new kid who's facing a, a life of existential hell. To, uh, to take over for that old bag, Greta Thunberg. I think Greta is now, St. Greta is 18, if I recall. So don't plan on, but I'm sure Greta Thunberg will have plenty to say on Twitter. Okay, let's get serious, guys, since this is a no-nonsense. What is on the agenda for COP26? Finally, what is on the agenda? Well, after launching with a World Leader Summit each day, each day will center around a theme from green transport, yes, to protecting nature. Okay, now here it is. It is rumored that several young activists like Bella Lack, Bella Lack, get used to hearing this name, Greta Thunberg, move over. Bella Lack is the one they are grooming to be the new Greta. All right. But it is the formal negotiations. All of that's just a sideshow. It is the formal negotiations at the heart of the event, though. The main goals are to secure global net zero by the year 2050 and keeping the world within 
one and a half C of warming. There you go. The, the, the best way to keep this planet within one and a half C of global warming is to kick the can down the road for another 30 years, but I don't need to get into the whole net zero scam. It is creative accounting. Don't have time for it ever. So that is the goal. Okay. Developed countries will also be asked to deliver on their promise to raise $100 billion for those most vulnerable to climate change. This was agreed to at COP15. COP15, but is still yet to materialize. COP26 is said to be the most important climate summit since Paris in 2015. Paris? What happened in Paris? What did happen in Paris six years ago? Paris, whatever, COP, that was COP21. COP21 was a landmark event where all nations agreed well, except the U.S., you know, the one thing, uh, one of the few things that Donald Trump did right, so already this is a wrong thing, where all nations except the U.S. and a couple of others agreed to limit global heating to no more than 2C above pre-industrial levels or ideally 1.5C, that contract became the Paris Agreement, said to be the world's most important climate change treaty. Yes. The word, and I'm not arguing that the, the climate agreement is the world's most important climate change treaty. The fact that the world's most cl important climate change treaty will do exactly nothing as in zero to save the planet Anyway, uh, but this is going to be the most important one since then. All right, one more time. So, what will actually be agreed to its COP26? Okay, what will actually happen at COP26? Countries will be asked how they intend to reach net zero. Produce, producing fewer emissions than they suck up, which is what, anyway, what they're talking about is you better believe sucking carbon out of the air. All of this is predicated on, uh, on the net zero is producing fewer emissions than we suck up out of the sky with giant vacuum cleaners. Make no mistake that all of this is predicated that we're going to scale up the technology for this BS carbon, carbon, caption, carbon capture. Uh, by the year 2050, it is hoped that leaders will make ambitious pledges to end coal use, invest in renewables, and of course, the number one uh, agenda item, switch the planet to electric vehicles. So uh, we're gonna come back in a minute and look at one country. We're going to look at Russia's ambitious pledge to end coal use, invest in renewables, and switch to electric vehicles in a, in a minute. We're going to go check in with Vladimir Putin to see uh, what he's going to be doing, uh, whether or not he accepts the invitation from Boris Johnson. But first, we're going to go over and hear from Andy the Gardener. Andy the Gardener, seven hours ago, weighing in on the question, what will be accomplished at COP21 before he had even heard the question? So. This isn't exactly an answer, but it's sure as hell a hell of a lot better answer than what is going to be accomplished at COP26 than that story.
Take it away, Andy the Gardener, and explain this to anyone. Not, I don't know if Andy the Gardener has been invited to speak at COP26 or not. <clears throat> but if he was, this is what Andy the Gardener, his keynote speech to the United Nations might sound like. Take it away, Andy. The billions of batteries and motors required for the green energy revolution are completely dependent on the giant battery we call fossil fuels. That was charged by Earth for over 500 million years. Without this battery, the giant 500 million year old battery of fossil fuels, the great green the great green solution grinds to a halt grinds to a halt the e car the electric car and green energy solution is the greatest present day delusion of the humans Attempting to electrify everything is far more wasteful and inefficient, in fact, than just burning the fossil fuels directly in internal combustion engines as another gigantic and damaging level of infrastructure with too low EROI to be anything but an energy sink has to be inserted between the extraction and consumption of fossil fuels, which also, of course, has to be constructed by fossil fuels, and the lethality of this concept is increased further by it being a false solution that allows our inappropriate behaviors and its ridiculous scale to be justified and continue and real solutions to be ignored until nobody is around anymore to talk about the mistake. So maybe that is net zero by 2050. Maybe uh, that is the net zero that Andy the gardener is talking about. Uh, real solutions will be ignored until nobody is around anymore to talk about the mistake. You know, the mistake uh, of all of this greenwashing horse shit that is going to be uh, bandied uh, about uh, by these 30,000 uh, clueless morons and these little lefties and these techno-utopians and, and, and these people trying to make a dollar bill out of electric vehicles like Elon Musk. Uh, you know, 30,000 people flying in on jumbo jets to a conference talking about the evils of flying around on jumbo jets. But anyway, I think it was uh, alert uh, listener Kevin Shanholzer sending me this little story nowhere on the mainstream media today. This is coming in from the Barrett's Observer, the Barrett's Observer titled Big Oil, Gas, and Coal. Big Oil, Gas, and Coal Making Headway on Russian Arctic Coast. Hundreds of ships loaded with construction materials shuttle to the sites of new non-renewable energy projects. And my guess is, and I think Andy would agree with me, that a whole lot of this uh, stuff that they're doing up there, a lot of these fossil fuels are going to be the fossil fuels that they're going to be using to build the renewable, you know, that's what Andy was talking about. A lot of these fossil fuels, more than ever, uh, are going to be used to build, you know, the windmill farms and all the rest of this uh, greenwashing crap. All right. <clears throat> Over the past year, ships have crowded along the coast of the Gaidon Peninsula, where natural gas company Novatec is developing its new Arctic LNG-2 project. Massive volumes of construction goods powered by fossil fuels 
are needed for the building of the port terminal that ultimately will handle almost 20 million tons of liquefied natural gas per year. The shipments to the area culminated after sea ice in the shallow bay melted away this July. Yes, allowing, you know, it is because of the burning of, you know what I'm saying, uh, taking full advantage of the melting sea ice, the shipments to the area culminated after sea ice in the bay melted in July and up to 50 ships have lately simultaneously amassed in the waters near the U-20 port terminal. On the 16th of August, a total of 45 ships were located in the waters near the new seaport. In addition, another about 100 vessels were located in other parts of the Ob Bay, uh, most of them near Sabeta, the Novi Port Oil Terminal, and the drill site of Jackup Rig Perro Negro 8. There are also several dredges in the area engaged in the deepening of local ship lanes. The Gulf of Ob and the adjacent peninsulas of Yamal and Gaidan is a top priority of Russia's oil and gas industry. Environmentalists fear its vulnerable Arctic environment could experience irreversible damage as natural resource extractors expand into the area. The Gulf of Ob is not the only place for an unprecedented industrial Arctic development. A bit farther east in the Taimir Peninsula, both oil men and coal miners, we're not just talking gas drillers, in the Taimir or Taimir Peninsula, both oil men and coal miners are now busy with the development of terminal facilities for new major projects. Six vessels uh, in mid-August were moored near the site where coal mining company North Star is building its seaport. The new, that new port, terminal that was formerly named Chaika will serve the Sirindaski coal field. It is due to be ready for operations in 20. 23. That's what's going on with the Keen call. According to the Ministry of the Far East and Arctic, I guess this is the Russian Ministry of the Far East and Arctic, the 56 kilometer long road that connects the terminal with the actual project processing plant is about to be completed. This plant will have a production capacity of 7 million tons of coal per year. Yes, uh, about 50 kilometers south of the Chaika terminal is coming another med major piece of infrastructure. Oil company Rosneft is building its Severe Sea Terminal that will serve the Vostek oil project. In mid-August, at least three ships were moored on that site. Um, it's being built to be able to handle as much as 30 million tons of oil by 2024, and only a few years later, the one terminal will be able to handle 100 million tons of oil per year. Yes, Rosneft now confirms that it has started construction of key infrastructure objects for the Volstock Oil Company. Um, the company in the first half of this year boosted its investments by 27% of which about 25% is reported to be spent on the Arctic oil project, according to the company's own report. Uh, 
the new fossil fuel projects unfolding in the Russian North Sea are all part of the country's larger, you know, development plans for the Arctic and Northern Sea routes by the year 2024. Russia intends to boost its shipments on the Arctic route to 80 million tons per year in the next three years and by 2030 hopes to have 150 million tons of various fossil fuels moving through the Arctic sea route. So it will be interesting to see if Vladimir Putin accepts the invitation to appear at COP26 for some no-nonsense discussion on uh, how Russia and this planet are going to divest themselves from fossil fuels. But thank you for that dose of reality because you ain't going to find it in Country Living Magazine. All the Country Living Magazine probably can tell you how to uh, can beans, which is what I should be doing because I probably have about 100 pounds of green beans, uh, organic, homegrown green beans on the vine right now. And uh, as far as I know, probably of the 100 pounds on that vine right now, uh, 95 of those pounds will be going into the compost pile uneaten, uncanned, uneaten, into the garbage. So get out there and enjoy your fresh green beans while you still can. Bye, guys. All right, dog, we are finished talking about COP26. I can tell you have the same reaction to COP26 as the rest of the planet. This is uh, Sancho Panza's uh, Bozo Nero impression. This is Sancho Panza, uh, you know, impersonating Jair Bozo Nero, scratching his head about what is COP26. Oh my gosh.